Hi everybody, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. I have a design team project that I want to share with you and this is a really fun folio kit that I got from Country Craft Creations. This is the envelope gatefold flip folio that is by 49 and Market that I did get through Country Craft Creations. And then what I'm gonna do is pair this with Bloom Where You're Planted. And this is some leftover papers that I had from a previous design team package that I did. And I wanted to create something with it. So I'm going to combine the two. Now what I wanted to show you before I show you how it all uh, came together was what is in this gatefold flip folio. So I showed this in a design team haul that I um, got, but I didn't really open this particular package. I opened another one that I have already used. Um, but I wanted to show you what you get in this package. Um, these are great folio kits. The cardstock that you get um, with the pieces there, it's real nice and uh, heavy duty cardstock. It comes pre-scored and everything, and they're all in pieces. So you can put this thing together however you want. So this kind of gives you, gives you, you know, some examples of what you could do, but then it also gives you some hinges that you can do to, to make your own pages. And it also gives you a template so that you can cover the envelope piece with patterned paper. So when you open the kit, you do get this folio and it's a trifold folio. These pages are roughly five and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So they're, it's a nice big folio. You can see it's really big. This is trifolded. Again, it is pre-scored. So you have gussets all ready to go um, in this. And then you also do get, if I can find where I put it, you do get a template that will help you cut your pattern papers um, for covering that envelope piece, which is really super nice. So you get that. And then it has a page that has a side score here. So it has a, like a horizontal flip. And then it also has, where did that one go? Um, one that is scored at the top. So you can have like a vertical flip as well. And then you get a gatefold that opens to the side like so, and then you get a gatefold that opens uh, top and bottom. So you can put these together any way you want and put this in the folio any way you want and create your own creations. So that's what I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be using this and then I'm going to be using this paper collection and uh, create something and I'll be back in a second. Uh, video time wise and I will show you what I made. I do also want to tell you that it does come with magnets. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them or not, but we'll see what happens as I create this. So I'll be back in just a flash and I'll show you what I made. Thanks for watching. Good morning, everybody. This is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. I have a design team project that I wanted to show you for Country Craft Creations, and I'm really excited about this project. I love how it turned out. I absolutely adore this. What I'm doing is I'm using Bloom Where You're Planted. This is an exclusive Country Craft Creations line, and I just absolutely adore the colors in this. The yellow and the blue are just absolutely gorgeous. And then the other thing I'm using is the 49 and Market Envelope Gatefold Flip Folio. And You've already seen the video ahead of this where I show you what is actually in this um, package. And I'm gonna show you today how I put everything all together and some really fun different things that I did with this folio. Cause you guys know me, I can't leave anything alone. I have to put my own spin on it. So I just wanted to um, share this with you and let's get started with that. I'm gonna take this out of the way if you have not purchase this paper. You really need to purchase this paper. It's amazing. I did use a 12 by 12 on this piece um, here, but you could use the eight by eight pack that's available um, with this paper collection to use this folio. Okay. So I did use the folio. I used every single piece except I used one magnet set instead. So I have one set left over. So I only used one to keep this whole thing closed. And the only other thing I did not use out of this folio were the smaller hinge pieces that came. So I used everything else to create this. And I, I, I'm super excited to show you how this turns out. Um, I also did get into my stash and I had the Sizzix die that I used and I'm going to show you how I use the honeycomb here and I did make a bunch of big bees that I put in the project because this is a bee themed 
and pansy flower themed project. And I just wanted to add to that. So um, on the cover, so this is an envelope folio. And um, on the cover here, I used one of the cut aparts that I put on some cardstock and then I lifted it up with some foam tape from Country Craft Creations and I'm almost out. I It was that giant roll of um, black foam tape that I have basically almost blown through. So I really need to order some more. And then in my stash, I had these beautiful crochet flowers and they were in a giant spray. And what I ended up doing was cutting it up into pieces and then weaving it underneath. If you can see um, with the foam tape, I kind of wove it underneath this particular piece that says love lives here and kind of have them sticking out all over the place. And you see these little yellow epoxy heart stickers. Those actually came from a craftology box that Sandy did, um, I think it was last year, and I had leftover pieces of that, so I had saved those, and I thought, well, the yellow matched perfectly. So because it says love lives here, I thought the hearts were perfect, so I scattered a few of those around the cover. And then I made, like I said, some of my little die-cut bees here, and those were super fun to play with. I just love that, but I thought it fit perfectly with the theme here. So the flowers again and the, the dye came from my stash and I just kind of put those around. So that's the cover of this. There is one magnet that holds this all together and it worked really, really well. So I do have one of the magnets left over that I can use for another project if I wanted to. I left this open here uh, just to show off the paper because I just think it's really pretty. And then I absolutely loved this paper here has the bees and the pansies and everything. And it says Merrill Farms Old Fashioned Pansy Mix. I just love it. And the back here, I took one of the papers that I had left over and uh, the fence here, I fussy cut out and laid it on top of the paper there. And then I did the bloom where you're planted. And this actually came from, um, I had another like piece of um, the packaging that I just cut it out of here and used a corner rounder punch that I have and then put it on cardstock and put that there. So I like the way that turned out. I just love it. And I don't know if you can see it really well on the video, but this whole fence is fussy cut out and laid on top and it gives it a little bit more dimension. Okay. So when you open it up, Here's the first section. So as you recall in the previous part of this video, you know, it had kind of a trifold thing. So this is the first section. I just took a piece of scrap, put it on cardstock and did a simple, you know, glued pocket. And then this is a cut apart from the paper collection. And then this was a piece of the leftover paper. And I just put it on some black artisan cardstock and put that in there. You can also put a picture behind here. And then over here, this is one of those gatefolds, the gatefold that opened up, up and down. And what I ended up doing was I glued, I put it on here, let's, let's start here. I put it on here with a hinge and I'll insert a picture here so you can see that. So I created another page essentially by adding one of the long hinges to the back of this particular gatefold. And then that just created another place to put pictures. And then what I did was I just glued the bottom gatefold up, which created a pocket. So I used another one of the four by six cut aparts to close the flap of that pocket on black artisan cardstock. And then when you flip this up, there's another, of course, there's a pocket back here. And then I put another one of the cut aparts, the smaller ones in there. So you have this nice, you know, pocket piece here. So you can tuck something in there and kind of, you know, hide it. And then you can put that there and that'll keep that flap shut. And then this piece here, again, was the gatefold that I added a hinge to. And the hinge, again, came with the kit. Um, it was two of the the long hinges here that I used to, to make that. So instead of just gluing this gatefold right onto the page, I created another page. So then behind it, uh, I kept this as like a photo opportunity. So we have two photo mats here. These were three and a half by three and a half. So you could put like a three and a quarter by three and a quarter picture here. And then I adhered the um, die cut pieces 
so that you could tuck a picture behind on both sides. Okay, so these are some of the die cut pieces that come. Behind this gatefold page that I created, I used another one of the um, pieces of the, um, the um, pattern paper. I actually fussy cut that out of the pattern paper and backed it on cardstock and then just made a little tuck pocket. And then because it's a bee themed, I wanted to create, you know, some honeycomb kind of, um, you know, photo mats. Gosh, use my words. Um, I used a die cut on the first one, left the second one blank, and I'm going to show you in a few minutes how to create these shapes. I've used this before when I did my Victorian sewing box, and I'll link that video below um, on how to create hexagons. It's really super simple, and I'm going to show you again today how to do that and how I created these. Um, and it starts just by having a four inch circle. So it's just, it's super easy. So I'm going to show you that. So I just created a couple little, you know, honeycomb kind of, um, hexagon little, um, photo mats there. Okay. So that's that gatefold. So then let's open this up. Cause as you remember, this is a trifold here. Okay. So then we have the middle section here and then the, the left side. So let's start with the left side. I left that completely alone because I absolutely adore this paper <laughs> so you could put a little picture somewhere on here but I really right at this point didn't want to cover anything up so I left it completely open um, the other thing too is that when this all folds up you know you don't want to put a whole lot of dimensional um, you know embellishments and things in here because then it'll take away and it won't close right and all that so I didn't do you know some some dimensional things on the inside I left that on the outside so this again was the um, the vertical gatefold page and I did the same exact thing. I added a hinge to it and created another flap. Okay, so this page is actually the base of the uh, envelope folio and then I put a, another hinge here and then created another flap. And then I just put it on the uh, opposite direction so that the pocket was on the inside and I did the same exact thing. I glued one of the gatefolds shut I used one of the cut aparts um, backed on cardstock to close the flap. And then inside the pocket, we have two more of the cut aparts. And I did use a little bit of, I have a little bit of this navy paper, or not navy, it's um, denim artisan cardstock that is no longer available, but I had a little scrap and I thought the colors matched. So I used that on the back of that particular cut apart. And then this is just a piece of the pattern paper that I really liked and I wanted to create a, a tag with that. So I just pop those in there and then close it and then this will keep the flap shut here. So this is the back of that trifold folio. Okay, so you can see how this kind of, how I kind of, if I do a top view here, this is how it looks from the top. Let's see if you can see that pretty well. Yeah, okay. And then, so then here, another photo opportunity, just like I did underneath the other gatefold. I just did it kind of the opposite direction. And then on this one, I used a piece of the gold paper that I had used. This is from my stash. Um, I made the bees with it and I had a little scrap left over. So I took this little piece of paper and I used my photo corner again and then backed it on the cardstock and then just put that there so you can put a picture underneath here. Okay, like so, okay. And then, so there's that. So that page is that. And then we've got the middle section here we haven't really talked about yet. So the middle section here is fun. So as you recall, in the beginning of the video, you had some pages that flip up and you had a page that flips over um, because of the scoring. So you had kind of a horizontal flip and then you had a, a kind of vertical flip. Um, so I combined them into the middle section. So on the front of this, what I did was um, with that die that I had, I punched out just the outside pieces of the honeycomb and I did three of them and then I layered them together in such a way as to make a pocket. And, you know, since this was bee themed, I thought, well, this is perfect, right? So I just kind of laid them down how I thought I liked it. And this is actually three of those die cuts. And then I just glued them very carefully together and created a pocket. And so they're just glued on the outside to hold that tag. And then I made one of the bees here that went with that. So I just thought that was really cute. So then this is the 
piece that came with the kit that flips up. So it already had that score. And so I put that here, okay? And then, so that's the middle section. Let's talk about the actual, this is the back of the base of the folio. And again, I did another fussy cut fence. And this time I did it so that I could create a pocket with it. So this is the same as the back of the folio, but I just didn't glue the whole thing down so that you could have a pocket. And then here's a four by six cut apart with the um, artisan cardstock back there. So you could put a picture back there and it just tucks in really beautifully right there. And then when you, so you flip this up and then I took the gatefold or not the gatefold. I took the other page that opened to the side and I just attached it there. It is a little bit smaller and it fit perfectly. It just fit perfectly. So I, let me show you that again. So this is the middle section of the folio. Okay. And then I did the horizontal page that flips up. And then I did the vertical page that flips to the side. And then on the inside here, um, I created some pockets and then used the um, pattern paper to create two more photo mats. And I just left those plain. I added the bees here and here that I created with my dies and pattern paper here. Now, these pockets actually came from the pattern for covering this piece right here. So as you recall, um, in the beginning of the video, there is a black piece of cardstock that comes with this folio to help you mat this particular shape. So you can just trace it and cut it out, which is what I did. But then at the end of it, I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? So that's where I got the idea to go ahead and I cut that piece. You can see I cut it in half and then I glued it on the two sides to create a tuck pocket. So I was able to actually utilize the pattern for the envelope piece and create another uh, interaction with this paper or with this project. So yeah, on this page here, I just took one of the cut aparts and put that there so you could tuck a picture behind and left that plain. And then that just closes up like that. So then it folds up and then have the magnet closure and that's the album. So I am in love with this. I just think this is just a super beautiful project. I think it turned out really amazing. So you guys need to go to Country Craft Creations. You need to get this 49 and Market Envelope Gatefold Flip Folio Pack. And again, I used all of the pieces. They had this piece that opened up here. They had this um, kind of long gatefold piece here. They had the trifold envelope here. I used the template for cutting the cover paper. I actually, that's what I made the pocket out of. I just cut it right down the middle and that created the two side pockets. And then um, the only things I didn't use were the two black hinges, the smaller ones that came with the kit and one set of magnets. That's the only thing I didn't use, but I was able to combine it all into one beautiful folio. So I hope you like this. Um, go get Bloom where you're planted. If you don't have this in your collection, you really, really need it. Um, I absolutely adore working with it. It's just, it's so pretty. It's, and the colors are so beautiful and springy. And as I'm sitting here, the weather guy is talking about we're getting snow tomorrow, which is weird where I live. So, you know, I really needed some spring in my life. So this was a good project to make. Now, before I go, um, I want to show you how to make the octagon shapes or octagon. I always say that it's a hexagon shape that I used to create these guys here. So let me show you that before we go. I'm gonna get this off to the side. And um, what I ended up doing was I made two pieces. So I made one that will mat, and then I made one to do the cardstock. So this is really easy. All you need, hold on just a second, let me find my stuff, is a piece of paper. Okay, so I used, let's get it. Oh, look at that, my compass, there we go. So this is just some tracing paper here, or not tracing paper, but copy paper. And all you need is a compass. So when I did this, so this starts with a circle and I ended up doing like the cardstock, the black cardstock is a four inch circle. That's what you start with. So take your compass. 
This is a great tool. Um, if you don't have one of these, you need one in your stash because it comes in really handy for drawing circles. You can draw half circles with it, making the hexagons. It's great. Um, so you need to have, if you're going to make a four inch circle to make your four inch piece, okay? So however you want to start your circle, you need to set your compass the halfway mark. So if you want a four inch circle, you have to set your compass at two inches, okay? So you need to have the radius be two inches and then like the diameter of your circle will be four inches, okay? If you want a six inch circle and or hexagon, you need to set your compass at three inches because that's the midpoint, okay? So I just use my Tim Holtz ruler and I put the point, the metal point of my compass in the zero mark and then you just screw and unscrew this to make the measurement so your pencil piece lands in the two inch mark. That'll give you the circle area that you need. So when you draw your circle, just be careful, make sure that you know your point doesn't move. You want the point of your compass to be right in the center and then you just follow this around and draw your circle okay so you have that four inch circle and if you look at this that'll fit right in there so then to cut and actually make the hexagon don't do anything with your compass you keep it the same measurement and you just anywhere on the outer diameter of that circle put the point of your compass and then just carefully go and draw a little line through that circle, okay? Just like that on either side. Then take your point of your compass, put it right in the middle of that tick mark that you just made, and then do it again, okay? And then you're gonna do this all the way around, okay? So this is how you're going to create your hexagon you just do that all the way around put that point right in that little tick mark right there and do that okay so now you should have all your points and then just grab your ruler again and your pencil and we're just going to connect those points really easy so we're going to put our pencil there and we're going to draw a line and we're going to do that all the way around Okay, and that's how you get your hexagon shape. It's really simple to do. And I'll link the other video too so you can see my, if you haven't seen it, my Victorian sewing box. I did this technique um, with that and created the hexagon shapes I needed for that particular project. So it worked out really well. All right, and then when you're done with that, you should have your hexagon shape then you just cut that out and boom, you have the cardstock piece that you need if you wanna create this. To do the, um, the inner hexagon shape, I just did it a quarter of an inch smaller, so I just put my compass back in here and I tightened it up so that it was at one and three quarters. And then that's how I did it to make a pattern so that I could do my pattern paper. And that's it. That is simply all you have to do to do that. So the first circle I did was four inches. So you wanna set your compass at two inches. And then the second circle that I did ended up being um, three and a half. So I set my compass at one and three quarters, okay? So that's basically all you have to do, all right? So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Please go to Country Craft Creations, grab your folio kit from 49 and Market, grab your bloom where you're planted papers and have fun creating this folio. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you later and uh, I'll be back with more tutorials. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.